Hello and welcome to Homework Help for Monday night, January 14th, 2013. We're going to jump right in with proportional thinking. Uh, proportion describes two or more equivalent ratios. Determine how many pieces need to be shaded to form a proportion. Use cross multiplication to prove your answer. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, I'm going to pick one of the more complex ones. Um, basically, all you're doing here is you're just shading in the figure uh, next to um, the one that's shaded in, you're shading it in the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and shade this guy in. It looks like that whole bottom half is shaded in. I'm not doing the best job, but I'm doing all right for being on, on an iPad. And then it looks like just this one here is also shaded in. Okay. Um, and so I think I did a, a fair job there of shading it in. Uh, pretty much the way it's shaded in, the other figure is shaded in next to it. So um, then uh, what I have to do is prove it. So uh, as you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total with one, two, three, four, five shaded. So that would be five over eight. Um, here we have uh, one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four by eight would be 32. And we have shaded in, this is 16, that's half of them, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we've shaded in 20 out of 32. And then what we want to do is use cross multiplication to see if they're actually uh, equal. So 32 times 5 and 8 times 20. Uh, 32 times 5 ends up being 160. And 8 times 20 ends up being 160. So they're both equal. Um, I mean, uh, it's it's not... The 160 doesn't have any uh, actual value, but it, it shows that if we get from cost multiplication, if we get both sides equal, it means then that uh, this ratio of 5 eighths is equivalent to this ratio of 20, 30 seconds, okay? So um, that's basically what you're doing on this front side. Pretty easy stuff, okay? Let's go ahead and move on to the back side. Okay, and here we are on the back side with Washington Street. Uh, Glenda did a survey of people f living on Washington Street. The data is shown below. Uh, here are... <coughs> On the vertical side of the graph, we have the number of families, so that's how many families. And on the horizontal side of the graph, we have the number of children per family, so it tells us how many children are in each family. Number one says, fill in the missing numbers on this table. So um, how many families have one child? Well, zero families, sorry, six families have zero children. Uh, and you can tell because there's this is the number of children per family, and there's six families that have zero children. Um, here we have uh, families that have one ch child, and they go up to this number here. So you're going to fill in that number there. Um, two children. There's this many families that have two children on Washington Street. Uh, this many families have three children on Washington Street. Uh, this many children have four. Th this many families have four children on Washington Street. It looks like no families have five children on Washington Street, and it looks like uh, looks like one has six, and those are already filled in for you. So just use that graph to actually fill in the actual values, um, and then let's see here. Um, we've got uh, number two. How many families were in the survey? So you're going to have to actually figure out the total number of families. Um, and you can do that by basically just adding that bottom row up and then explain how you know, uh, how you found that out. Uh, number three says how many children were in the survey. So now you're going to have to figure out, you know, there's zero children times six families means there's no children there. Uh, one children for however many families had one child. So you're going to have to multiply those two. Um, two children times that many fam two children per family times that many families that have two children. So you get a new figure there. Three times that one, four times that one, five times that one, six times that one. And then you're going to have to add all of these together, and that'll tell you how many children were involved in the survey. And then show how you figured it out. Just basically show that process that I just, just described. Okay, if you need any, if you have any more questions or you need any more help, please feel free to call either Mr. Schlepper or myself or send us a text. Uh, good night, good luck, and go Bears! Rawr!